This is Troy King with Imagine Out Loud, and today we'll be reading an audiobook called God's Bar and the Problem Patron. There once was a man, or was he ever one, a guardian of fey folk and a watering hole, and by that I mean a magical bar, his own domain smack dab in the middle of an empire of Lockton. The people thought his magic and his folk went against the natural order, since it wasn't specifically human. Jones couldn't argue the point, well, since he was partially skeleton himself. Burning with this strangely alive fire, he looked like a picture-perfect representation of someone damned to hellfire. He still had one flesh and blood eye that seemed to burn brighter than the fire in its intensity. Parts of his body were still real as well. His legs, his right side of his torso, all fine, but his left arm and ribs were skeletal and burning, along with most of his skull, except for one jawline, one eye, part of his mouth, the rest skeleton and on fire. The fae and various non-human entities that inhabited his realm were surprisingly jolly, just about the nicest people you would ever meet. White-haired to light blonde depending on age, bright yellow eyes, near-perfect figures, male or female except for some more jolly exceptions, with unnaturally long lifespans, these magically inclined barkeeps were a huge attraction to the outside world, and so were the near-modern amenities compared to the medieval era fantasy world that was outside these doors, the comforts of an entire city, worth a futuristic bar were too much for any wandering knight or adventurer to turn up, except the fairly religious ones, since while well, Mr. Jones is not exactly part of any doctrine they practiced. The booze was unreal, flavored sodas to ice slush drinks, downright impossible to the land around it. The whole city was a bar that was like a neon dreamscape many didn't want to leave. The food and the drink and the beautiful company, it seemed like paradise, Mr. Jones was a happy sort to visitors, greeting them well, accepting their local currencies. Whatever they were, he didn't even check most of the time, since the magic could tell if they were being honest with him. Mr. Jones wanted fair and honest folk to have an escape, a haven for wanderers. The many inns within the weather-controlled magic realm beneath the literal neon skyscape, not of advertisement, but of many lovely sayings and characters, such as, Welcome to our home. Rest with us, valued ones. The beds are warm and the taps are open and various characters smiling brightly. Local animals like flying squirrels made almost cartoony. To the homey fields, to local wanderers, some from neighboring kingdoms as well as sayings and characters that changed and spanned miles of sky, varied where you went. The whole city was a good 50 miles of territory. Outsiders saw, very rarely saw all of it just didn't seem to have interest after a few drinks past the tourist tramps and the inns in the garden, was the city Mr. Jones allowed all fey folk and magic folk to live with, without prejudice against one another. Those that chose to live in the neon city left behind their grudges. The local magical species earlier mentioned with the whites or blonde hair and yellow eyes, perfect figures besides a few jolly exceptions, well, that was the keepers of the city, the species known as the Majaran. They differed from humans with their long lifespans. They kept gardens that grew to the neon lights that substituted the sun. It still felt warm and comforting. The plants varied, but many grains and fruits and vegetables that seemed to grow back as soon as you picked them, all thanks to Mr. Jones' lights, the Majorans happily supplied his bars with food in exchange for never experiencing hunger in their lives. The next species, not found too much in the bar other than for musical guests, is the creatures known as the Petaurus. Not for a bull-like appearance, but for attitude, stubborn and quick-fused little scamps, they were skinny and rarely above four foot ten. Strong for their size and prone to singing, made up tales for adventurers that they rarely saw. These runts were black and red-haired with a blend of two long flowing, well, usually pigtails. With deep orange eyes, they often wore circular bracelets for rank, magical items that got more powerful in each pair. Each of them were worn for different uses. The first one was given to all Praetorius children to improve strength with one bracelet and a matching one lifted things with their mind. Handy for chores or lifting physically otherwise un impossible tasks. These lesser seen beings were often the innkeepers as well to the point in nights 
most rarely notice them other than for high and by because funny though they did a really good job at breakfast once a few drinks were in them they weren't paying attention the last of the local species were mostly beasts of various uses but magical dogs and cats known as the orna, orna and felk by breeds respectively wandered around both glowing with little flames like mr jones except the cats were blue and felt warm and comforting to the touch and the dogs were green and similar this paradise this eden served the greatest food and drink ever seen